Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I wanted to show you how to give your MoGraph clones random colors in Cinema 4D and Redshift. You're also gonna learn how to control these colors and then select your own from a gradient or even use your own brand colors. And if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video where I show you how to apply this effect to any Grayscale Gorilla Plus material. All right, let's get started and let's head on in to Cinema 4D. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D, and if you're like me, you run into this situation a lot. You got some clones, you got a cool thing going, and what you wanna do now is start to add random and varying colors to each of these clones. Well, there's quite a few different ways to approach this in Cinema 4D, and I've come across a much better way than I did in the past. So I wanted to show you how I used to do this, and a new way that is gives you so much more control. So let's get started. Um, first thing you need to do is uh, just grab a brand new Redshift material, I'm gonna use a standard material and I'm gonna replace this orange material for now. We're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to add random colors to any material, including any plus materials later. But let's just start from scratch here. We got a basic material, I'm gonna drag it directly on the cloner and uh, we need to open it up. So double click on your material to open it up in the node editor. Now you may have different style nodes, I'm gonna use the new nodes. Um, and we're gonna need two new nodes. So let you, you could either double click here in the grid or hit this plus button. I'm just gonna double click to open up the search. I'm gonna get two nodes. One is called a color user data. You could drag it out or double click on it. Uh, you can also grab a ramp. Now we're gonna use the ramp in a second, but for now, let's just connect the color user data directly to the color and also select your color user data. Come down here to presets and go to Objects, Geometry, ID, Color. All right, we get random colors. Look at this, we got a whole bunch of different colors. It picks at random for each individual clone. Now, uh, this is a good start, but this has some drawbacks. Um, first of all, this only works in if your cloner is using the instance mode. If you're using multi-instance like I do all the time, it, it doesn't give you as random of an object, in fact, it only randomizes it because uh, each object in the cloner gets a separate ID, but each clone does not. So we're bumping into to a problem there. There's another problem with this method, which is when you go to render, uh, I, this happened to me all the time. Uh, when you go to render, your final output is different from your viewport. So check this sphere out is this kind of green, and then this one's red. In fact, all the colors are different. So. Uh, while I used to use this uh, for these kind of MoGraphy effects, it lacked the control I wanted and it always gave me a different output on the way out. I, I fell in love with these colors while I was working and then on the way out, I'm like, oh, that's not what I was used to. <laughs> so what's a better way to do this? So uh, let's jump back into the standard material. And instead of uh, using the geometry ID color, we're gonna go to presets and we're gonna go to MoGraph and use regular color. And once you do that, um, you're gonna see everything goes to white. Okay, so this, uh, you have to set up a MoGraph, MoGraph random effector to control the colors on your scene. So let's do that. Um, with your cloner selected, I'm gonna have you hit Shift C on your keyboard and uh, up's gonna pop this search tool and you type random. And this is the random effector you want. I'm gonna hit enter to add it to our scene. Now by default, the random effector spreads our pieces apart here. I don't want to use it for any rotation or position. So let's go to parameter. I'm gonna turn off position. I'm gonna go to color mode and turn on fields color. Okay, so now we still don't have random colors. What else do we have to do? Well, we have to go to fields and click on random field. If you don't see it down here, you can click on this and find random field right down here. And uh, again, if it doesn't show up, make sure you click this button right here. There's random colors. And once you have this, now your effector is going to control your colors. Okay, so this is great. This, first of all, it lets us use our cloner in multi-instance mode <coughs> and uh, this helps you render much faster with tons of objects. Multi-instance is something I use all the time, so this is already better. And when we hit uh, render here in the final viewport, you're gonna see that the colors are identical. So, already off to a better start.
Okay, so now that this is working better, uh, let's go into our material and take more control over these colors. These are just some random colors that Cinema 4D is choosing to add, but I want more control. So let's click on this material and remember that ramp that we brought in. Well, it's time we use it. So now instead of going directly into the color, let's go into the ramp first. Let's go to input, all to input. And from out color, let's go to color. And what the ramp is doing is it's taking all of those random colors and converting it to a gradient. Now the gradient by default is just black to white. And you can see this is represented here in our clones. And if you wanna change these colors, you can go into your random field and you can go to the field and uh, you could just click the seed until you get different colors. Uh, sometimes you have to open up your viewport for this to refresh and you'll start to see uh, different ones. You also want to make sure it, there it goes. You also want to make sure in your random field um, that you go to remapping or I'm sorry, color remap and go down to gradient. Okay. And this is also going to give us more control and it also gives us more values in our scene. In fact, this gives us a lot more white values than we had with the default gradient. And you can also control it right here if you want brighter or darker points. Um, so now you're starting to see the control. Well, of course, we have all these random black and white um, colors. What if you want your specific colors? What if you have brand colors from your client or you want to control these colors specifically? Well, of course, you can go in into the ramp, go down to the gradient and choose any colors you want. So you can just go and choose between uh, two colors here. Let's get some classic MoGraph colors here. And you could do this, right? Um, you can also open up uh, right here under load preset and you're in your presets, you're gonna see some gradients. So Cinema 4D ships with some uh, gradients right here. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you have access to all of these uh, color palettes that, that we have. Just beautiful color palettes you could click on and get beautiful colors that you know are, are match and, and work great in your scene. So here, there's another way to do it. Um, and then once you have a color scheme that you're happy with, you can have even more control by, uh, again, uh, dialing up and down these colors. So if you want more white in your scene, you can move these around. If you don't like one of the colors, you could change it. Um, and if, even if you've made color palettes on your own, I made this uh, pastel palette down here. I'm just gonna double click on it and boom, I get my Easter <laughs> kind of uh, uh, color palette. I'm gonna go back to the to um, maybe this one here. I'm really digging these colors. And um, let's talk about one more uh, issue with this. And that is if you're animating your scene and your clones are moving, you'll start to see some color flicker. So for example, uh, if I do in my random effector, adjust my position, let's say, and I uh, move it, Sometimes when you're animating stuff like this, you'll start to see flicker. Now, I'm not seeing it right now, uh, but let's grab the cloner itself and move it directly. Okay, now you're starting to see it. See how each of these objects are flickering different colors? Well, let me undo that. And I wanna show you one more uh, setting in case you're getting flickering random colors. So what we need to do is go into our random field and set random mode, turn this from noise to sorted. Now, when you do that, you are gonna get different colors because it is assigning colors in a different way. So make sure you do this early on in the process. But once you do that, now if you're moving your cloner or you're moving your clones around, you can see now that they all stay exactly the same. Now that one disappeared because we're cutting it out, but look at this yellow one right here even if we keep moving, it will stay yellow. Okay, so keep that in mind um, as you're setting this up, that if you're animating your clones, that you definitely want to set your random field to sorted. So now that we know how to set this up on a basic material, I wanted to show you how to add random colors to any material. Maybe you're using one of the Grayscale Gorilla Plus materials or building one of your own from scratch. How do you add this effect and also add other textures to it? So for this one, I'm gonna use a Grayscale Gorilla Plus wood unfinished material. This ash unfinished material looks really great. I'm gonna drag it into our cloner and just replace this other material to start with. All right, next, just double click on this material to open it up. 
you're gonna see it's in the Espresso nodes instead of these other nodes that we worked with before. But the way to do this is uh, almost identical. So we're gonna go here and search for data. And here's the color user data, let's drag that in. And then remember, we also need a ramp. Let's type that in, drag it in. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna connect the out into the ramp. And then the ramp, we now, instead of going directly into the material, we now want to uh, combine it with this wood material. So how do we do that? Well, go into search for layer. And what we need here is a color layer. So let's just drag this out into our graph and we're gonna connect this ramp into the base color. And we're also going to uh, connect this texture into this layer as well. So here's the base texture. Uh, almost all of our materials and maybe any materials you're working with will have a base texture that's getting plugged into the color channel in the material. So just find that texture. Uh, you see it's this wood texture here. We just wanna add this to our color layer. So we, let's just drag it into layer one of the color layer. And then we're going to replace this base color with the new combined color by dragging out into base color. Okay, so what do we get? Let's see what we get by default. Well, by default, it's just gonna be the regular wood. And that's because this color layer, if you uh, click on it, you're gonna see that the default is the blend mode is normal for the layer one. We don't want that. We want something like multiply, and that's going to multiply on top of this color. Now, we also didn't specify in our color user data what we wanted. Remember, you have to click on color user data and click this button here and go to MoGraph and click on color. Now it's going to read those original colors and put it in a ramp. Now we also don't have the color set up. So remember, you also have to tell it what colors you want to use. In this case, we have the default black and white gradient. Let's replace it with the same one we used before. So now we're getting our random colors with this wood material applied to it. Now this looks pretty good with more wood type colors like this one, but some of these really saturated colors here aren't looking very good. <laughs> and there's a way to, to uh, kind of tweak this that uh, works really well for me in many situations. And that is to bring a little bit of the original material back into this. So grab this original material and drag it into the layer two color. Now we need to go into the color layer. We need to enable color two. Let's turn that on. And we're all the way back to where we started, but we don't want it 100%. We just wanna dial this way back. And what we're doing is starting to introduce the original material back in, but keeping the colors. So if you look at this sphere in this uh, cube right here, you'll see the difference. With it off, it's just too saturated, and, and that's just really not how painted or stained wood looks. There's always this little uh, part of the original shining through in many ways. Um, so what you may have to do, depending on what material you're using, is just dial this up. You can see a little bit goes a long way. Just 0.1 brings in enough of this original uh, material to start to make this more realistic. So let's dial this down just a little bit more. I don't. I think a little bit goes a long way here. And let's close this down and see what we got. Well, this is looking really great. And don't forget, if you ever wanna change the colors, all you have to do is go into your ramp and pick a different color palette uh, or make your own or bring them in from the internet. Anything you need to do, you could do right within here. This gives you a ton of control. And when you go to hit final render, the colors will remain identical. Okay, I wanted to show you another thing to keep in mind as you're playing with this effect. Sometimes with different materials, you may end up in a place that the material or the color palette is either too dark or too bright and things just aren't combining the way you want. Well, to fix that, what you're gonna do is grab, well, let, let me show you what I mean first. Uh, let's grab a darker color palette, uh, something like this maybe. And you'll see that some of the darker colors just aren't 
it's just not picking up the, the grain as much as I want. So uh, if you ever run into these situations, what you wanna do is add another ramp to your scene. So I'm just gonna type in ramp, drag it out, and you wanna put this in the, um, the, the material that you multiplied in this layer. So that's this first one right here. So I'm gonna go into the ramp, and I'm gonna go out into layer one. And by default, nothing will change. But now that we have a ramp here, we have a lot more control. So for example, we can crank this up um, and really make things extra bright. This will make the colors more saturated and it will affect the color less because remember we're multiplying this on top of our material. But it also works the other way. You can make it darker and really add a lot more grain to your object. So you can combine these two and really dial in the effect you're looking for. Now this is very exaggerated, it's almost a marble effect, but you can see this is much more visible and much more clear on our uh, object. So I overdid it a bit because we're here on YouTube and it's hard to see subtlety, but I wanted to show you this because it's an effect I've used all the time when it's just not blending the way I want. One last tip as we wrap up, uh, multiply is, is usually gonna work really well. Uh, if it's just not working at all, you may be in a case where you want to uh, use something like screen or overlay. So I just wanted to give you some other options here in this pull down if things are just not blending the way that you want. Thanks again for watching everybody. And if you made it this far, don't forget to hit subscribe and even hit that bell button to let you know when we have new tutorials coming out. We're always putting out new stuff to help you make better 3D renders. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.